How did you find Tai Chi or how did Tai Chi find you? Oh, and there hangs a tale. So I was brought up in a fundamentalist Christian extended family, not just the nuclear family, the extended Mm -hmm. family. And it's only sort of later that I've come to realize how traumatizing that was for me. And so Mm -hmm. when I was 15, I read a couple of books, Lord of Light and Siddhartha, Lord of Light by Raja Zelazny, Siddhartha by Herman Hesse, Mm -hmm. Fifth Business by Robertson Davies. And it really blew me open. It really blew me open. And uh, so I left the Christianity and I've, you know, and like I said, I've done some therapy and other things, but religion, your mother religion is like your mother tongue, right? It, it shapes you in a way that nothing else ever can, or your first love, right? Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't necessarily stay with that person, but it shapes you in very interesting ways in, in your relationships. And so, if you'll allow me a metaphor, it left a taste for the transcendent in my mouth, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. Right. And then I got to university and I took a first year course in philosophy and I encountered the figure of Socrates and the project of wisdom. And it was like, that's it. And of course, that is still with me now. That's how profound it hit me, how profoundly. But what happened, and then I went into philosophy, what happened in philosophy, academic philosophy, now it's changing now, but we're talking about a long time ago, the 80s, the topic of wisdom, self-transcendence, all these kinds of things that are rich in the Platonic corpus and the, like, and the Neoplatonic, it drops, off the, it drops off the table. And you talk about skepticism and epistemology, and these are valuable sort of meta-scientific and metacultural skills, and I, I value them. But that hunger for the cultivation of wisdom was not being met. And I happened to live in a place where literally down the road, there was the Tai Chi and Meditation Center. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to give the Eastern philosophies a try. And maybe they will give me what I need for satisfying this hunger for the cultivation of wisdom. And and I was very lucky again because, first of all, wonderful people. And secondly, this is where I got what I would now call an ecology of practices. They didn't teach me one thing. They taught me they taught me a meditative practice, Vipassana. Mm-hmm. They taught me a contemplative practice, Meta. And then they taught me Tai Chi Chuan to get how to flow between them in a regular and reliable at this ecology of practices. And it and that that's how it happened. And that has been with me ever since. Wow. Vipassana, Metta, and Tai Chi, that is a very potent and uncommon trinity there. That's a very formidable combination of things. And I, I do want to revisit at some point meditation as contrasted with contemplation. Yes. But first I'd like to ask you, How old were you when you decided to leave Christianity? And what did that, what was that experience like? (laughs) 15. Yeah. And my life became bifurcated and fragmented in a way that I came to deeply find distasteful. And so trying to deal with fragmentation has also become a pervasive theme not whether it's a fragmentation within a person or a fragmentation between the different disciplines that study the mind. That's why I'm in cognitive scientists, trying to integrate and solve the, the fragmentation problem, right? Yeah, it, it was very challenging for me because I, I couldn't move out on my own or anything. I'm 15, yeah, right? right? I, I'm still in my family. And they, ha- they knew that something was going on. And there was kind of, a, like, there was kind of this weird don't ask, don't tell thing. It was very challenging me. There were times when I went to church and, you know, the minister would be getting everybody to bow their head and raise their hand as if they agreed with this. And of course, everybody's looking around surreptitiously and everybody's raising their hand and I'm the one person not raising my hand. Ugh, just very, very difficult. And then, of course, I had a group of friends, close friends at high school. They became very much invested in this project that I was engaged in of wrestling with meaning and they really... And so they became very supportive, and that was very happy for mm. me. But that was, you know, and it caused things. And it caused me to get married too young, mm. right? Because marrying was a way of escaping that, uh, that fundamentalist family and setting up a new one. And, mm-hmm. and I'm, on, I'm on good terms with my ex. I'm not making any criticisms of her. I'm just saying we, we got married 
I think, too young because we were both escaping that. Mm. That's a good reason for forming a company together for a while, like, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring or something. We're both going <laughs> to leave fundamentalism together. We're going to help. But it's not the basis for a long-term marriage, right? Mm. It's not. Of course, you don't know this at the time, right? The, the, kind, the ways in which, you know, I was foolish around this are, are significant. I was wrestling with a lot of stuff. I was wrestling with a profound kind of depression. I used to call mm. it the black burning in my chest mm. because of that hole, like I said. I can imagine. But also, like I said, the, the, there was trauma. Like there's instances like from when I was still in it as a kid that were absolutely traumatic to me. I came home one day. I lived within walking distance of the school, and there was almost all, there was always somebody in the home just because mm. of the way it was a small home. We were a poor family. There was kids, and the, you know, my mom was mostly a housewife. And uh, I came home one, and there was nobody there. Mm. And I was absolutely convinced to my bones that the rapture had occurred. Mm. All my family had been taken away. I was too sinful. I was left behind. And the Antichrist and his minions were coming for me. This is like, I'm 10. And then another one. I, I, like, I used to read the Bible every day. And I'm glad I have, by the way. I, bi bi biblical literacy is really important part of cultural literacy. I don't begrudge that. And the, and the Bible still is deeply meaningful to me. But I read this passage in the New Testament where in the multiple places they talk about the unforgivable sin, the sin that can never be forgiven, no matter how much you pray about it. And I was terrified, and I thought, have I committed, like, I'm an, like I'm a, again, I think it was like 12, have I committed the unforgivable sin? And I got like, and, and, and is thinking that the unforgivable sin, and all, you know, and I, I was, I got, oh, and my mother could tell I was getting, like, I was, I was getting deeply distressed. And she took me to the minister who was supposed to help me, and he just gave me empty platitudes that even as a 12-year-old, I recognized were completely useless. And I realized, he doesn't have an answer to this. Mm. He doesn't, you know, he pretended he had it. He spoke with the confidence of some, but there was no answer forthcoming. Mm. And it was just like that kind of trauma. And, and, and these, are, these are just a couple instances of many. And again, I am not, I'm not villainizing my mom or my dad or my family. I love them. My mom and my dad are both dead. I love my extended family, but this is... When I stepped out of that, that now came to the fore. Like, well, you've got to address this. What is the world such that, right? You shouldn't have these fears. You shouldn't have these terrors. What do you do with the way that has sort of made you afraid of things? Like, and so, it, yeah, it took, it took work. It took therapy. It took meditation, mm -hmm. contemplation, Tai Chi Chuan, and, you know, a lot of good education, especially in the Socratic Platonic tradition. So that's what it was like. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. But the thing I have to tell you, Tim, is I meet a lot of people who are attracted to my work because of something similar like this happening to them. They have left a religious home, and they, they do not find any religious homes viable, yet they still hunger for that deep connectedness, that meaning, mm -hmm. that space in which one can cultivate wisdom.